On our fourth story, we interview Vivian Connolly, who has just been the model turned actor. But first, here's a clip from one of her latest films. Well, in this universe and every other universe, I am sure, dead sure. I know Terry. Do you? Yeah, I know her. Him. Him, I mean him, I know him, Terry. Terry Terry. Yeah, Terry, I mean, I know her. I mean, him, I, I know him really well. You know. Well enough to get a sex wrong? I, I have a lisp, you know, and, and I, uh, I, I pronounce my word wrong when I get kind of nervous. But sure, I know, like, Terry Kerrigan. He'd sort these things out for me, you know, good old Terry Kerrigan. So, Vivian, thanks for um, being on a Variety TV with me. You're welcome. And you've been modelling now for many years. Yeah, more than I'd care to remember, but uh, approximately uh, about 15. Right. And essentially, to be a model, you have to be good looking. That's really it, isn't it? Yeah, but it helps to have a good attitude, a good personality, be the right height. Um, well, no, the four foot dwarves don't really get a look in, do they? <laughs> well, God, I just, okay. Keep different going. Different type of modeling, but anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, especially here, absolutely. I mean, your, your attitude is very important and professionalism and, you know, having all the right gear with you and things like that. I mean, and you know, I modeled in London and Germany and Paris and mm -hmm. obviously when you're in Europe, everything's provided, the budgets are bigger and things like that. But in Ireland, it uh, very much depends on what you bring to the job. So you're basically well. lugging everything around with you. Yes, you are, which is great for the figure. So that's a fine, but it's, uh, yeah, painstakingly walking around Dublin with a big bag with about 25 pairs of shoes in it and underwear. And I wouldn't like worry, that. that happens to my mother all the time. <laughs> the, um, apparently. <laughs> The, what is it you, you love about modelling? Because obviously to stay out of it that length of time, you must have loved it, surely. It's a great career and it provides uh, great opportunities in that, I mean, the variety of people you meet and work with and um, even the situations you find yourself in. So, uh, you know, if you're clever and you use it well and things, I mean, you know, i.e. for like networking or things like that, um, you learn an awful lot. You learn, you know, from the marketing side, advertising side, PR. But you like also, that. I mean, that's that. But you also, when you get, you, I believe, at the point depot as it was then, you got a chance to be in the catwalk with some of the world's greatest uh, yeah, supermodels. Yeah, I worked with all the supermodels. Yeah. yeah, so that was great. You know, I mean, it's it's great to see them up close and personal and see how. Are they very nice people, really? Are they? Of course they are. I, <laughs> and Naomi's just lovely. I, no doubt. Um, but do you know diamonds all the time? Do you? Really? No, we didn't. no, okay, not that cool. day. None of, the, none of those dirty diamonds. <laughs> what is it that you, you don't like with the industry? Because I said every industry has a dark side, if you like, but none more so perhaps than um, maybe Yeah, well, obviously, fashion. I mean, you know, it's a cutthroat industry, you know. So, um, yes, there's bitchiness, you know. I mean, you meet, as I said, great people, but, you know, there is an element of bitchiness and obviously it's a highly competitive industry. So you're up against attitudes and egos and things like that. So I don't necessarily like that, but I don't let it affect me that much because, I mean, you can surround yourself with, you know, by whatever type of people you want to be surrounded by. You, you can just go and do your job and go home and you don't necessarily have to socialise with yeah. you know, but certain but types but of people. But we read in the papers a lot, but not the stuff we read in the papers about models and celebrities. It's staged, isn't it? It's, it's actually PR and, and it's... Yeah, it's, they're, uh, they're spin doctors, you know. I mean, nobody wants to read a boring story, do they? So, I mean, what's the point in telling the truth? So, yeah, yeah I have absolutely. a few friends who do, but that's, uh, <laughs> no, they don't get out much. Um, you have been one of Ireland's top fashion models and you, I believe, were voted the sexiest legs in Ireland some years ago, is that right? Yes, just a few years ago. Just a few. <laughs> um, but you also have some other interesting talents. I think we're going to see a clip here from, I think it's 2007, mm -hmm. Celebrity Eurostar. Yeah. Um, I roll that. Mm. The girl's a fool, she broke the rules, she hurt him hard This time he will break down She's lost his trust and so she must know all is lost The system has broke down The, did you ever think of singing more? Uh, I don't just mean through the neighbour's window. I mean, did you ever? <laughs> yeah, I did a bit of that too, and in the mirror with a brush. But uh, the no, the we. Case has come out there. Go on ahead. <laughs> we sang at home, you know, my parents and uh, my family and things. But no, I did a little bit years ago. Louis Walsh asked myself and a girl, uh, um, uh, 
can't remember her name right now. Una Gibney to uh, form a girl band. But it was around the time when there was a lot of girl bands being mm -hmm. formed and things. But it was great fun. We did that for a while. But then he got obviously, you know, very busy with Boys Own and Westlife. And I sang and a backing singer for the Karch Twins in the Eurovision. So that was good. So fun. you're in the Eurovision? Sort of in the background. Oh, still there. <laughs> still there. Uh, we didn't do well that year, did we? No. That's, I'm sure nothing to do with your singing. <laughs> was it? No, I wasn't sure. Um, now, as I said, you, you've launched, or should I say, relaunched your, your acting career um, because you acted with uh, Brendan O'Carroll mm -hmm. um, some years ago as well, is that right? Yeah, that was about 12 years ago. I did a play called The Course with him, mm -hmm. and I played a lady of the night, maybe. But she turned her life around. She, uh, she, yeah, she just wanted to turn good, you know. So she did a course among other misfits, and uh, yeah, it was very funny. I, I worked with uh, Simon Young and Brendan O'Carroll, and we we uh, played in the Olympia for about mm -hmm. six weeks, and we played in the well, Everyman Cork. Yeah, yeah, and we played in the Everyman in Cork for about six weeks as well. So it was great fun, and we we became a big family, you know, when we were doing that. So there was lots of shenanigans going on. I, no doubt, <laughs> Brendan O'Carroll. I'm sure there was. Yeah. There was the. Um, of, of a purely board type, I should hasten focus, to add. focus. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> the now that was said, that was back in was this two thousand? You're saying or yeah, it was when I was about yeah maybe so, two thousand. So since yeah. Since that time, obviously, um, you have been modelling, and you, I said, have, have relaunched your your acting career. Now you've actually um, credited uh, Terry McMahon, who. Um, Basically runs um, very oversubscribed acting courses mm -hmm. in in, uh, in Dublin, and I think that was the time of the Irish Film Academy. Mm -hmm. You said he reawoke your, your passion for for acting again. Yeah, what, he, what did. Is it he What did he, What did he do for you? Well, I mean, I loved it when I did it the first time around, but uh, I obviously had to make a choice between modelling and acting, and I was I was at the height of my career at the time, so I was making a lot of money. And in fairness, Brendan gave me nice money at the time, but mm -hmm. I didn't know you know the security of it, and I come from a family that's think of security and think of your career and, and the future and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I had to uh, make a choice and I did and I'm not sorry for that. I enjoyed whatever. But so it was always there underneath somewhere. And so last year I decided, right, you know, I've had enough modelling. I'm lucky enough to pick and choose my jobs. And I'm in a position that I can, you know, now go back and, and uh, relight that passion, I suppose. So, yeah, I went back and uh, did Terry's course. And uh, I just felt so alive after every night that I came out. But what is it? What is it he did for he you? He is. Uh, he's so passionate. He's so talented. He's. He's. He's, he's also coming up later to the show. So the more you say how good he is, I'm sure he'll hear somewhere. Oh really? So well, keep, keep going. He yeah. knows anyway. I'm sure. Yeah. But um, yeah, he's a very gifted and talented guy, and he is brave, and he, and he stands up for what he means and says and stuff like that. And I really admire that in somebody. Um, but what did, what did you do for you though? What what is it that he? He pushed me yeah. to. Um, he just pushed me. You know, there's so much. He pushed all of us. I mean, you know, there's so much in there that you're afraid to let go mm -hmm. sometimes, or you, you've forgotten that was there. But is that what, that what you needed? Was it basically kicking the arse? Is what you needed? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's See? exactly what I got. Good, good for him. <laughs> The um, now you basically have, have been said. And I, I led off by saying that people refer to you frequently as the the model turned mm -hmm. actor. Mm -hmm. I mean, does that annoy you? I mean, does that is that a hindrance towards towards you now? Because you're still modelling quite a bit as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you came back to uh, John Compton, your friends, yeah. who's have an agency. So yeah. you're you're quite in demand there as well. But so is is it a hindrance? The no, I mean it can be if you let it. You know, I mean. I mean, do people just look at you and say, "Oh, she's a model; she can't act." She was yeah, I'm sure they do. Um, <laughs> But uh, hopefully I let my work speak for itself and I just want to keep the head down and keep working and I don't want to I don't want to talk about doing acting too much until I've actually actually done like, a, you know, a, a feature film or something like that. I want to let the work speak for itself and okay. I want to focus on that and just work harder and, you know, just learn more, keep learning more and by through working, because I think you just learn more through working and being around creative people and I mean, people are always going to have you, you know, pigeonholed and kind of go, well, you well, know, she's a model. But so just on that, because as you mentioned that, because a lot of people have this perception that models are a little bit. So, yeah. you know, actually, we have a, a clip, I think, from um, the celebrity Eurostar star, Brendan O'Connor, has a comment to make about yeah. what he th thinks of models. I think if you have it there. <laughs> uh, it's, it's normally a disappointment when a model opens her mouth. <laughs> it's what, sorry? It's normally a disappointment when a model opens her mouth, but um, honestly, like that, that was, it was really amazing. Thank you. Um, you, you have, 
it's the funny thing, it's always been a fantasy of mine. Remember Cameron Diaz when she was hot in The Mask? Yeah. It was always a fantasy of mine that in the middle of that, in The Mask, that she would sing a Phil Linnett song. <laughs> so it kind of made a fancy of mine from two sides. But honestly, you've a lovely voice. Like, it's so pleasant. You really know how to use it. Thank you. You weren't kind of stage schooly about the way you moved around or anything. You just have a natural kind of a confidence, kind of star quality to you. I mean, I'm, I'm shocked. Well, to shock Brendan O'Connor is a fair <laughs> achievement. Um, so, I suppose uh, you mentioned earlier on, it can be quite, you know, blasé about it, but you are fighting that perception of a Yeah, but you know, it's good because, you know, with things like that and comments like that, it keeps you on your toes. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, you actually, but, but, you but can get pleasure it. out of kind of, you know, not... Proving them wrong? Exactly. And but isn't that the case that some models actually are... Dollars dishwasher. Well, as I'm sure some television hosts are, but I mean, that's really? just the look of the draw, you know what no, I mean? I so, one yet, so. But yeah, some of them probably are, but I mean, you know, a lot of them that I know now have degrees and have, especially in Ireland again, it's not a kind of a thing that you can, some people, very few, handful actually, can probably make really good money out of, but other than that, you have to have something else kind and of to fall back on. Do you think some people, models in particular, because of the nature of the business, um, want it too badly that they actually? Yeah, that can happen, actually. I've seen yeah. it happen that, um, yeah, it, it, you know, if, if there's a want and a need and you're, you're pushing it too mm. much and you don't have that kind of just natural ability. I mean, a lot of modelling is a natural ability but that it, you actually yeah. can't learn. And, and personality, too, because obviously even singing, hearing the, the song, I mean, it's quite obvious your personality was coming through. Um, but is it the case that, is it modelling you want or is it the case of going to the VIP clubs? Is it being the picture in the papers, getting... Certain. Well, you know, I mean, every young girl, I suppose, at, at a very young age, they're very impressionable. So, you know, from 12, 13, I mean, all they see is glamour and all they see is magazines mm -hmm. and shows and things like that. So, of course, they're influenced by that. And, of course, everybody wants a taste of that lifestyle. But, I mean, it depends on, obviously, your upbringing and, mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. A taste of it is fine, but, um, you know, you, you get very tired of all that kind of fake kind of lifestyle, so. And, and uh, I'm sure you do. The... Um Filming, because obviously acting in Ireland, you you frequently do no budget or low budget mm -hmm. films because there's not the money around. Yeah. What's it like, kind of swapping the, I suppose the the catwalk for going to some godforsaken part of of Ireland and uh, for no money, having to act in the rain um, with someone <laughs> who, she yeah, would probably well, you know, it's very similar because I've stood on um, uh, Portobello in a bikini in the rain in November, so. It's this wasn't, uh, you know, after <laughs> night, uh, the, the club or anything, was it? It was, yeah. Oh, anyway. right. um, we, I heard, heard about that. <laughs> yeah, no, look, at, everybody knows modelling isn't as glamorous as it seems. I mean, uh, I've gone, we travel in minibuses to Casa Bar and I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with Casa Bar, it's just no, very far do, away from please Dublin. Do. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you're up at three o'clock in the morning, you know, barefaced, kind of no makeup, on a minibus with your pillow and you arrive down to, uh, you know, sandwiches if you're lucky <laughs> and uh, then a lot of models don't want to eat sandwiches because they don't eat bread so there's huge fights about that so well, um, but in regards to that I mean in, in filming I mean what is it you want to see yourself doing in, in acting because especially perhaps acting compared to modeling there is even less glamour if you like because you can end up doing supporting roles or mm -hmm. very important roles but nevertheless they you don't even get the prominence that you would get in on the catwalk, you know. So, what makes you keep going? What is it about that you love about acting that would actually? Well, it's it's the whole exploring different characters and uh, just you know want to absolutely absorb a, a character and just kind of let yourself free to be that person and to you know research them and and see what what makes them tick. Is it escapism? Do you get the chance ah. of not being Vivian Connolly? And yeah, of course. But I mean, I mean. There's a certain amount of that, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, if you weren't, you, you're not going to let yourself be that whole character. Or So it's lovely to turn off and go, you know, leave that side of my life there and I'm going to deal with this and then you go back to it and whatever. But it's just, I just love, I love the kind of people, you know, when you're, when you're acting and um, I love the whole creative side of it. I just love, it makes me feel so alive. When Vivian, thank you very much. Uh, you actually have a website as well, I think, um, vivianconnie.ie. Yeah. So people can log on to that to get more information about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And very, wish you very uh, good luck in the future. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me.